And so he tells Noah in, the, in Genesis chapter 9, he says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Uh, he said, this is your assignment. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Isn't that a great assignment? He says, go out and be prosperous. But what happens to us? We get to a place where we have our own desire. And so contrary to the commandments in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4, you see the Bible says, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. In other words, they're saying, let us do it ourselves. Uh -huh. And that's when men get in trouble, when we begin to do it ourselves. Oh, man. So instead of spreading out and repopulating the earth uh, as God commanded, they started to build towers. Now these towers were known as Mesopotamian temple towers also known as Zagorites. Uh -huh. And that means that this was a staircase that represented a staircase to heaven from earth unto heaven. Yes, yes, it had a rectangular shape, and on the side of it had steps that they would walk up to, and it would meet at a peak. Mm -hmm. So they would see this as a place or symbolic of a place representing a staircase to heaven. Y'all ain't catch it. In other words, they're trying to say, I can reach heaven by my own handiwork. Amen. This is when we get in trouble, when we think that we can reach heaven by our gifts, our talents, the things that we do, where we work, who we're married to. We think that we can reach heaven by our effort, but this is why God got mad and confounded their language. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 These are rebellious people who united in a godless effort to establish a monumental human enterprise. Wow. They said, let us take our destiny in our own hands. Wow. This is unrestrained rebellion of men against God. People who come together to exclude God. And we are living in a nation at a time where we're trying to find every type of organization, every type of doctrine uh -huh. to exclude God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Most of the time, people who exclude God are the first people who cry out, Lord, my God, when they get in trouble. Amen. Come on. That's why people are talking about what's happening in schools. I was looking at the news, and I saw that big fight that they had at the high school this week on the news. And everybody wants to cry about God, but we have excluded God outside of our school system. And so we wonder why, you know, we got to cry out and say, where is God? But God says, you're building your own towers to exclude me. There are laws in this land that are building towers against God. Uh -huh. There are people in organizations and groups that are building towers against God. Amen. You think about the homosexual community, towers against God. Uh -huh. You think about Planned Parenthood and the abortion community, towers against God. Yeah, and God is not going to stand for the ways of the world, but God is looking for a remnant who will raise up and say, I will stand for you, God, Amen. even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the winds of narcissism have begun to blow on the descendants of Noah. And they said, let us build us a city. They had become egotistical and proud. Uh, they had a do-it-ourselves attitude. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 says, In the last days, men shall become lovers of their own selves. In other words, he says that signs in the times of the last days and we, is when we start to love our own selves. Uh -huh. He said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 21, for all seek their own and not the things of Christ. 
Paul says, I'm trying to find somebody who is like-minded, but I can't because everybody is seeking their own will. It is when we live in a day when our ambition is to be successful without God. God, I'll do whatever it takes, and I'll do whatever it takes without God. Paul says, I'm trying to find somebody, but nobody is focusing on Christ Jesus. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let me pivot here. We want to ask the question, what kind of towers have you built up in your own life? Uh, it, it's all right to talk about towers in somebody else's life. But, but what kind of towers have you built in your own life? You know, the, the proverb writer writes this song. He says, a, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his steps. Did you catch that? In the Holy Christian Bible, he says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his, his steps. Most of us, we get in trouble because we have been following our heart. And, and the world tells you to follow your heart. But the Bible says we should trust in the Lord with all of our what? Heart. In other words, our heart is deceitful and wicked without God. So that's why you cannot exclude God out of your heart issues. Most of us, we come from heart issues. Like, uh, our daddy might not have been there like we wanted him to. Our mother might not have cradled us and wrapped her arms around us. We may have not had the right support. Uh, but it is not about what happened to you. It's about your response to what God has given you to accomplish in the earth. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. He says, in other words, when you translate this scripture, he, he's saying it is a proud man who will construct his life strategy without God. Come on, man. And, and that's when we get in trouble when we try to strategize our life without God. Because when what we want doesn't work out, then we say God didn't do what we thought it would do. Well, God never gave you the plan in the first place. Uh, that, that's why the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. In other words, when what you want doesn't happen, it makes you sick. And you walk around depressed and hurt and despondent, and, 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 it, and it is because you are walking out of the will of God. But when you get in the will of God, you can look at your trials and your tribulations as a stepping stone to what God has for us in our life. This is why people fall in the rivers of depression, despondency, anger, hate, bitterness, because their plan was not commiserate with, with God's plan. Come on now. It is when your plan fails that you lose hope. Mm -hmm. But did you exclude God out of your plan? This is what the people did in Genesis chapter 11. They said, let us build. But they never asked God. What is it in your life that you have begun to build without God? Come on now. Did, did, did he tell you to choose that mate that you have? Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me, y'all quiet. Did, did you exclude God in the process of your relationships? The friend that keeps pulling on you that you know you need to get out of your life. Did you, did you ask God, should they be in your life? Man, did, did you ask God, should you take that next job? Just because, and some people, they'll say, man, my new job has me working on Sunday. Did you ask God that you should take that job? Come on. Somebody right. say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we got to be careful because what happens is, is when you are outside the will of God, what God will bring is what I call sudden change. Amen. There are certain things in your life that God will allow to happen to get you back on the right track. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, when, when I was playing football in college, we would have something on the defensive side of the ball called sudden change. Which means when there was an interception, when there was a fumble, when there was something, we had to be ready, prepared to go back to war. The coach would say, never put your helmet too far from you because there might be a sudden change. And all of us in here, whether it's an accident, whether it's a divorce, whether whatever it is in your life, you have to be prepared for sudden change. Because there are often times there are things that you don't plan or know about, but God allows it to happen in your life for you to get right back on the right track again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout sudden change. sudden change. The Bible says 
that pride has a twin brother. Mm -hmm. It says pride comes before destruction. In other words, you if you see pride, destruction is in proximity to pride. He, he is on the way. Uh, see, God, he doesn't like the proud for us. He despises them that are proud. And this is what happened to the people here in Genesis chapter 11. They were prideful. And there's another one. I want you to write this one down. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. It says, in his pride, the wicked man does not see him. In other words, he says, your wickedness causes a cloud between you and God. Uh -huh. Your pride is considered to be wickedness. And then he says, in all his thoughts, there is no room for God. No. Have you got to a place in your life where there's no room for God? No. He said, this is so good. He, he says, his thoughts, there is no room for God. In other words, I can fill my life with activities mm -hmm. that I prioritize God out of my life. Mm. I, I can I can put I can major and minor and minor and major things. I, I can I can be active without a anointing. Mm. How is that? I, I can come to church, uh, but I have no strength. Mm. I, I, I can come and I can participate in prayer, but I'm really not here. Uh. I could be sitting in the chairs at church, but I'm really daydreaming about my next job. Uh. Uh, that's because I'm here, but I don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm. See, when you have the power of the Holy Ghost, it means you are under the influence of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Somebody amen. say amen. 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 In other words, your anointing will tell you that it's not about the people, it's about purpose. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It is not about the people. It is about purpose. Yes, sir. Whether one or two of you showed up today, the purpose was to preach the gospel. Yes, sir. The purpose was to sing the gospel. The purpose was to give God the glory. Yes, sir. But sometimes we get caught up in the people and not the purpose. Come on. I met a man yesterday. He came to my house trying to sell AT&T wireless connection. My wife said, why are you sitting out there talking to her? I said, because I like to hear. I said, sometimes I'm that person at the door uh, whenever I go out to evangelize. And uh, so I said, I like to listen at, at people. So he came, and then he left. And uh, we didn't buy it, but I told him, I said, man, keep, keep going. Keep working, man. Persevere. Keep doing it. So I seen him out there walking up and down the road. And the Lord said, talk to him. So I said, hey, man, what you used to do in Boston? We started talking. And I said, you ever heard about the gospel. I said, you go to church? He said, uh, he said, no, he said, it's been about 10 years since I've been to church. And I asked him why, and uh, we began to talk, and I began to explain to him the grace of God, what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, and how he died and he paid a price. Now, if you believe in that price that he paid, the Bible says it is counted unto you for righteousness. Now, today, if you want to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and I showed him the scripture, and he said, man, that sounds real good. I said, well, we can do it right here. Why? Because it's not about people. It's about purpose. I had a man out there selling AT&T. Not, he didn't know that his soul would be saved in his work. But when you open yourself up to yeah. the will of God, yeah. God can use you at Walmart, at the grocery yeah. store, yeah. wherever you are, God can use you if you say, Lord, I humble myself unto you. Amen. Somebody shout humility. humility. Humility is a key weapon in our spiritual battles. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Most of us, we look at humility as something as passive. But when you break down and you look at the etymology of the word humility, Q means humus, which means the word human. Military comes from the word militant, which means warfare. So when you put two words together, it means human warfare. That's what humility is. So the devil wants to catch you at moments in your life when you are high-minded. Why? Because you are thinking about yourself and not about God. Yes, sir. That's where he thought he could catch Jesus when he was high-minded. High-minded. The Bible says he took Jesus up on a tower yes, to sir. look at the kingdoms of the world. Why? Uh -huh. He wanted Jesus to get high-minded. 
But Jesus taught that humility is the way. If you can be brought low, just as a little child, he said, if I bring a little child, if you can be as submissive as that little child, he says, you shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? It is because of our humility. Everybody shout humility. humility. So our humility comes from our trust in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? His might. Not our might, but his might. In other words, humility is submissive strength. Come on, man. Did you catch that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Humility is submissive strength. In, in the Old Testament, when the angel of the Lord showed up to Hagar while she was at the well, she was at the fountain in the desert, the angel of the Lord said, where are you going? She says, I'm running from my mistress. I'm running from that house of pain. The angel says to her, go back and submit. And he says, after your submission, that's when I will multiply your seed. Because it is in our submission to the will of God comes our multiplication, yes, comes our yes, blessing. Sir. But it takes us to be humble enough to say, Lord, not my will, but your will will be done. I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on in my life. But God, I will submit myself yes. to your will. Yes. So I say, amen. Yes. amen. It is submissive strength. It is, it is not about us. You remember Paul said, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. I, I've been through my own share of experience, but I'm up here today because the grace of God. Brother Rich said, it's because of the grace of God that I'm here singing unto you. I've been in some places, I've been in some trials, I've been in some tribulations, but it's but the grace of God. Yeah. See, some of us, if we yeah. would reflect that on what yeah. God has brought us through, yeah. and we'll begin to celebrate, nobody in here should have a dead praise. Yeah. Nobody yeah. in here should be yeah. sleeping right now. Because if you really appreciated what God was doing in your life, you will say, I'm here by the grace. I'm here by the grace of God. So here it is. These people, they tried to build without the greatest architect that ever existed. They said, let me build in a tower without the greatest architect and the greatest contractor. Let me build. Let me give a blueprint. But I'm not going to involve the one who can give me instructions. I, I was reading an article yesterday and, and I, it talked about how, and some of you who are contractors, you know about the landscape. How you can look at the land and the land looks good on the outside but really when you get to the land you notice that, that there are some problems. And, and here it is in, the, in the, uh, the story. It said that as he looked at a land and he looked at the land he wanted to purchase the land and he actually did purchase the land but he wanted to build a four bedroom home on the land uh -huh. well after he purchased it they noticed that it was only approved for two bedrooms uh -huh. what is that saying you can desire something but if it's not in the will of God can I, can I help you here if you, you can begin to own property that does not qualify according to the plans of God you can want something that looked good, but God is saying, no, I, I want you to wait. But then you rush into it anyways, and you didn't know that it does not qualify according to the will of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Your flesh can desire what your spirit disdains. Amen. Your flesh can want something that your spirit is angry at. The Bible says that your, your flesh and your spirit, they war it against one another. On. In other words, every day that you wake up, you're going to have a fight with your flesh and your spirit. Amen. Because the spirit is saying, now you know that's wrong. But the flesh is saying, now you know that feel good. But the spirit is saying, you know you need to stop. But your flesh is saying, well, why don't we just do it for a little bit? Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Here. I'm just because your, your, your flesh and your spirit are warring together. Uh, against one another. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. Here lies the struggle with addictions. Because you can desire something that God does not want for you to have. The Bible says, if you're after the flesh, you will follow after the flesh. But if you're after the spirit, you will follow after the spirit. But there's always something
something on the inside, a craving that we were born with that has to fight against the spirit. That's why we have to renew our mind on the word of God. That's why we have to be in places like this so we can, we can get rekindled and re, 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 replenished again. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It is here that we experience the touch and the power of God. And that's why we have to build upon a stone that the builders rejected. Amen. See, what you notice is that when they cast Jesus out, it was saying that I'm casting out the cornerstone. Yes, sir. Because the cornerstone doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. The cornerstone, it, it wasn't pretty. The Bible says, but they cast that one out that the builders rejected. Mm -hmm. But for us that are believers, that is what we should build our house upon. Yes, sir. That everything he went through, he went through for us. Somebody say amen. 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 Number two problem that I found, and I'm almost done, that I found with the, the article, it said that you can have septic tank issues and you can have well issues that can produce health problems through the water that streams into your house. Yes, sir. If you do not have the right examination or if you don't, do not have the right person to evaluate the property, you'll notice that there's some issues with the property. Well, what does that say to us? Because when you do not drink from the right fountain, and you still drinking from the stuff of, of your yesterday or in your past, then that stuff will begin to infect you and you'll find out what you thought you wanted you really didn't need because they have contaminated your spirit and you're wondering why am I going back to the stuff that I thought I got rid of. It's because you're not drinking from the well of God. God says I can give you a well that never runs dry. I can flow out of you rivers of living water. To say, Lord, I will not go back, but I will run forward. Somebody say, run forward. Run forward. So here it is in our text. The good news is that if we come together with the same mind and the same thought process, the Bible says that they could not stop them for nothing. That's why Jesus, God, had to come down and confound their language because he says they will actually accomplish whatever they desire to do, whatever their imaginations to do. So God says, I got to come and confuse their language. God confuses their language. But what that should tell us is that if we come together with the same mindset, same goal, your marriages would be better if you could get on one accord. Yes, sir. Your relationships would be better if you could get on one accord. Yes. Your children would be better yes. if you could get on, on one accord. Yes. See, sometimes we think that even with our children, it is not about our information. It, it, it is about our participation. If sometimes we would just participate, it would help our relationship. Somebody say hallelujah. So here it is. The project was not about, to, it was not about being near God, but it was being known by man. They didn't want to be near God. They wanted to be known by man. And we get in trouble when we want to be known by people. Come on. Versus drawing near to God. Amen. We get in trouble when you can do everything and you have time for everybody else in your life. Yes. But God gets yes. the last two Come on, now. Come on. of your day. Yes. The Bible says the reason why they did this is because they did not want to be scattered. Mm. But God scattered them anyways. Uh -huh. Because the fact that their focus was not on him. Their focus was on being famous. They wanted to build themselves their own land. You know how we live in a generation today uh, for American idols, and everybody wants to be an idol or want to be famous. You want to be something. You want to be on the board. You want to be something. But here is their problem. God said, go out, be fruitful, replenish the earth. Yet they stopped there. And it is us who will have to even in these last days to raise up and say, I will be the one that will follow God. I will be the one that will say, Lord, send me, I will go. Because what happened is, is the same thing that happened in the book of Acts in chapter 8. The Bible says that he says, if you tarry here, you shall have power. And when you have power, you shall go out and become witnesses. Well, they never left. And in chapter 8, the Bible says he sent persecution to scatter the people. Do you see the, the tree? 
if you don't do what God has you to do, he will allow something to happen in your life when he calls you to scatter in your ways. It causes you to scatter. So in the church, what God is looking for is more believers who will say, I'm built to last. Yes. That, that if I'm going to build, I'm going to build with God and not without God. I'm going to build according to God's will for my life. I'm not going to build by a worldly condition. And I'm, going, I'm not going to build according to what somebody else is saying. But I'm going to build my own relationship with God. Yeah. So he gives me discernment to know right from left. Oh, yeah. I'm going to stick with God for the rest of my days. Yeah. Because I want God to move inside of my heart. Yeah. Because every now in the king, I, I know I may get in trouble. Yeah. And I don't want God to be away from me. Yeah. But I want God to be near to me. Yeah. And the Lord tells me that if we draw nigh unto God, that God will draw nigh. Us, uh, that if we give God our surrender, uh, that God will give us everything that we need. Uh, I remember in the word of God, uh, it said that he will supply all of our needs uh, according to his riches in glory. Uh, so God says, I will never leave you uh, and I will never forsake you. Uh, that you may boldly say that the Lord is your helper. Uh, I wish I had somebody in here today uh, that you knew God will show up for you to think of power. See somebody in here today You got a testimony huh? That God has brought you from a mighty long way huh? You got a testimony to say I could have been dead and gone huh? You got a testimony huh? I could have got shot or I could have got accident huh? But you got a praise in your spirit huh? That say Lord I praise you huh? Even when nobody else is praising you huh? Lord I shout huh? Even when nobody else is shouting huh? Lord I give you glory huh? Even when nobody else is praising you Come on, give me your neighbor, say neighbor. I got a testimony. If I had time, I could tell you. But right now, all I can do is praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Here it is, what we got to understand uh, is that while we're trying to reach heaven, uh, it is not about our effort, uh, but it is all about the grace of God uh, and what God lets you do. Uh, he says, if you will have enough faith, uh, you can tell mountains to be cast in the sea. Uh, if you have enough faith, uh, even when the sole of your foot shall tread, uh, he says, I'll give unto you if you have enough faith. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I remember in the book of Joshua, he told told them, he says, now I want you to go over the Jordan. And he says, all I want you to do is put your feet in the water. He says, when you put your feet in the water, the river will begin to move back. But you get to have enough faith to say, Lord, whatever you tell me to go, that's what I will go. Lord, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I will do. Because I'm not trusting in man. And I'm not trying to be without God. Now, shake your neighbor high five and tell them I'm ready to follow God. Now, Brother Rich, come again and render us a selection. Amen. One of my favorite songs that he sings is Good, Good Father, and I've asked him to sing that. But uh, how many of you know we need to participate in worship? Amen. Amen. It's not about looking around and, and seeing who's beside you and seeing who's doing what, but it's about worshiping the Lord. That's why we got out of our bed this morning. Amen. To come and worship the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> I playing music. Uh, I thought I was all that. Uh -huh. I thought that you know I was going to be somebody. But you know what? When I got saved by Jesus' blood, He said I gave you that voice for me. So I sing for Him. I don't sing for me. I still get nervous getting up here, but it's for Jesus. This song is called Good, Good Father. If you don't know it, it's easy. Once we go around one time, you'll know the song. You'll be in there with us, all right? Yeah. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love. In the dead of night And you tell me That you're pleased And that I'm never alone You're a good, good 